The iPhone text crash bug now supports Twitter and Snapchat, a free ransomware builder takes a 20% cut, and a free VPN service, it comes at a cost. I'll give you a hint, it, it, it's a botnet. All that and more coming up now on ThreatWire. I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is ThreatWire for Friday, May 29th, 2015, your summary of the threat to our security, privacy, and internet freedom, and a huge mad props to all of our patrons that have been helping us bring back the show in a big way. And with that, let's get started, because you know what's really fun? Crashing your friend's iPhone. That's right, you can send a text message with these non-Latin characters, and as so eloquently described by popular mechanics, the string of Unicode characters processed by the iOS text rendering service, their core text will cause the phone to reboot when it's rendered in the notification area, which is kind of hilarious. And while it's really fun to reboot your friend's phones by using text messages, security researchers have discovered that other apps, such as Twitter and Snapchat, can be used to deliver the malicious text as well. The bug affects most Apple products, including the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch, and Mac users can experience the bug too. They'd have to receive the string of Unicode characters in the terminal. Apple has issued a bulletin acknowledging the bug and offering a workaround, that is, using Siri to reply to the malicious message in order to prevent the iPhone from crashing. You can also just go ahead and disable the notifications altogether. I'm sure there will be a patch soon. Ransomware has been on the rise, and mainly because it's effective and lucrative. And unlike your typical malicious virus, which will, I don't know, delete your data, ransomware actually encrypts your data and holds it hostage until you pay for the decryption key, usually with Bitcoin. Go Bitcoin! So if you're the malicious sort, you could make some money in this highly illegal and unethical way. But if you're particularly entrepreneurial, you may consider acting as a ransomware man in the middle. That is what a new ransomware service does. It goes by the name of Tox. And Tox users can sign up and create their own customized ransomware in just a few simple steps, providing the dollar amount for the ransom and their own threatening text. And the Tox service will go ahead and generate a two megabyte Windows screensaver file, which, if run, will set up a Tor client. And then, you know, the victim will use the command line curl tool to communicate with the Tox backend. And if the victim pays the ransom, well, then Tox is going to cut you in. 80 20 split. Getting hit with the Windows-centric malware is similar to the other ways. Just please urge your friends, the non-techie type, to stop double-clicking on every random executable they come across on the web. Considering the simplicity of Tox itself, the ransomware, I mean, pretty much all it does is replace the dollar amount and the threatening message, so it's pretty likely that antivirus vendors are going to have signatures rather quickly. More and more media companies are using geofencing as a means to lock down content. It's a technique where companies only let viewers from IP addresses known to be within their country to view the content. You can think like the BBC iPlayer. And from a technical standpoint, it's pretty terrible practice because the internet was not developed with borders in mind and it's actually pretty easy to circumvent these restrictions. In recent years, VPNs have become a preferred way to mask your internet traffic as having originated from another country and, uh, you know, partly because of the increase in geofenced premium content and also because the extremely low cost of VPN services now. And one such service, Hola, 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 we'll go with Hola, offers its users a free VPN but there may be some strings attached. Hola is ridiculously easy to install and set up on Chrome. It's just a simple extension and in a few clicks you'll be up and running and, in, and once installed your computer becomes part of a, well it becomes both a client to a VPN and a server for someone else's traffic. It's kind of like Tor except without the anonymity layer and then everyone is also an exit node. And you know what it means to Hola is that they can provide a service just by peering everyone together instead of spending its own resources. It's a cool idea until Hola just goes ahead and starts selling its clients resources. As reported by Torrent Freak, Hola generates additional revenue by selling its clients idle bandwidth through its Luminati brand. And the service allows anyone to make HTTP requests through its vast subscriber base. Basically, it's a botnet for hire, and it's on the backs of the unwitting users. Now, this came to light recently when the forum 8chan was hit with a distributed denial of service attack that was traced back to Hola users. Hola is claiming that the practice is clearly spelled out in its terms of service, and if users don't want to be part of the botnet, basically, they can pay $5 a month for the premium VPN. You know, I read this story, and honestly, all I want to do is set up a Hola VPN 
on my virtual machines and then go ahead and like sniff all the HTTP and secure traffic coming out of them. Is, is that terrible? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. You can leave those in the comments below. And before I go, I do want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you find value from the show and you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash threatwire. And uh, you may even allow us to feature your adorable fur babies because these are some adorable fur babies and I would love to feature them in the next episode. We are so excited. We're hoping to hit our three times a week milestone goal and that'll be a rotation of Patrick Norton and Shannon Morris and myself and I hope you will continue to contribute and uh, help us make this possible, independent and ad free. And you know, if you can't donate, it's no big deal. A like, a subscribe, all those go a long way too. So you can find all of our past episodes, links to our social networks and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you on the internet.